right, right honorable speaker. Uh, right honorable speaker, I rise to support the motion for the approval of the budget estimate for the Ministry of Trade and Industry for the financial year ending 31st December 2019. Mr. Speaker, in doing so, I would like to highlight a few of the challenges and some of the implementation difficulties that we have had with the Ministry. Mr. Speaker, we are aware that one of the clarion promise of His Excellency the President was to deliver to each district a factory. And these districts were seen to be the base of the industrial drive and to provide sustainable jobs for our teeming unemployed youth. Mr. Speaker, right from the start, it was quite clear that the, the President was promising something he doesn't control. You cannot control the decisions of the private sector to move into any area to invest. And therefore, to have made a categorical statement to deliver one district, one factory, when that decision rested with the private investor, was in itself very problematic. Mr. Speaker, in 2017, I recall we approved 463 million Ghana cities to support one district, one factory. Nothing happened. Mr. Speaker, in 2018, we rolled over this same amount, 463 million for to deliver one district, one factory. As we speak, as we speak, the total amount disbursed for the entire industry, whether it is for one district, one factory, or for whatever program, is in the region of about 251 million. Mr. Speaker, we are now being told, we are now being told that the government cannot be held responsible for not delivering a, a, a factory in Bogatanga Central constituency. Meanwhile, we were told and voted on the promise that the president would deliver that to us. We are now being told that ministers to go and get people to promote factories. Mr. Speaker, that was not a promise. And as we speak today, the government must be held responsible entirely for delivering those factories and not pass the back to the private sector because the private sector never made honorable, those promises to member. the people of Ghana. Mr. Speaker, honorable Allah. member, any reference to the fact that honorable members may also contribute to the process by going to get appropriate persons to promote it. It's not like an abandonment of responsibility. You will not go on that path. There's never a limit to the contributions that elected members like the honorable members here can do to promote a government project. Withdraw that one and proceed, please. Mr. Speaker, I take note. Uh, but except I withdraw. Please say yes, that, please. I, I, I take note and I withdraw. But, Mr. Speaker, the fact is that the president was the one who promised to deliver the factories. And as we speak today, there is no indication. Matter, is, and is for that matter, hello, honourable, it's not so, it, and that cannot be contemplated. No president will say, "I'm going to bring a, pro, a, a, a proposal for national development." Therefore, everybody should fold his or her arms, and I'm going to do it. Well. Is that what you want to say? If that is not what you want to say, then don't try to put it in all this kind of meandering way. Please proceed. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker. From the estimates. Right honorable speaker, from the estimates That's all. and from the briefing that we have had from the Minister of Trade and Industry, my municipality, Bogatanga Central Municipality, has zero factory expectation. That's right. Zero factory expectation. And that is not the basis for which the people of Boga voted for the MPP. And I am very worried. I am very worried that we have promised something and now there's nothing inside. And for your 20. 18 and 2017 estimate, yes. we are not part of the one district one factory because we are not getting anything. And we have existing factories that are currently not operating and they have not even been listed as those that can be supported to be revived. And that is a major concern. Yes. Mr. Speaker, a major issue that I find very missing in the minister's policy objectives is trade facilitation. Yes. Mr. Speaker, we are aware that the cost of doing business is high because partly at the port, the cost of clearing goods at the port is very high. We have introduced in the past a single window platform where this house supported the government of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama 
to design and roll out a single window platform using WestBlue and using GCNet as the main platform for delivering this single window. Mr. Speaker, only last year, only last year, His Excellency, the Vice President, instructed that by September he wanted to see the paperless system work. And Mr. Speaker, as part of the, the your committee, Trade and Industry Committee, we have extensively engaged stakeholders and gotten some stakeholders trained to implement this single window platform. Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, unfortunately, there is a major policy shift that was not announced in this house, even in the budget. And we are now hearing that Unipass, Unipass, which is a Korean company, is now going to take over, it is not appearing the estimate, is now going to take over our single window platform so that West Blue and DCNet will exit Honorable, from general Honorable, 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 Honorable. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I, think, I think my colleague is out of order. Indeed, we are here this morning to Trump. discuss... Uh, uh, Honorable, you are, you are being referred to page, page four of the report. Order, honorable members. So, put page four in context and then respond accordingly. That is my view. Order, honorable members, order. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I think that I, I would want the House, or I want Mr. Speaker, to bring our, our colleague, uh, 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 our colleague's attention to the fact that we are here to discuss a budget document. We are here to approve this document, the estimates. We are not here to ask questions of the minister. If he has a question, he knows the way. He should put his question, and the, 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 the table of this will bring it up for him to come and ask his question here. As we are here today, we are only here to discuss this estimates. And the approve. estimates and approve the estimates. Debate. Why are you bringing Unipass and West Blue and 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 and? and, 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 and has no relevance. Thank you very much. It has no relevance. relevance. To what is the relevance? Oh, the, the honourable member who is making reference to other banks and other ethics to please contextualise it by telling me where in the report, Mr. Speaker. On page four of the document, the minister intends to spend part of his money on trade development program, which include trade facilitation. Exactly. And trade facilitation is a key policy objective uh, of the government in the What is the reference to the Unibank et cetera that you want to talk about? Is that something you have heard from somewhere? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Honorable yes. members, let us not deliberately go outside our well-established parameters just for the sake of what I would not want to describe. If you've heard something from somewhere or there's some talk somewhere, please, that is not part of this report. And we shall operate within the parameters of a parliamentary report. That is my ruling. Honorable, you may continue. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, I make reference to paragraph two, the second paragraph on page four, four point two point one. Mr. Speaker, the minister indicates, and with your permission, I would like to read from the report. It says, following the implementation of the paperless electronic system through GCNet and pre-arrival assessment reporting system, there has been an increment of 24% in government revenue collection and a reduction in the clearing time at the port. Mr. Speaker, quite clearly, GCNet has delivered, quite clearly, West Blue has delivered. We have the Minister's own assessment. Would you want to restrict yourself to what you have just read and withdraw your earlier statement? That's all. Honorable member, and I don't want any protest, unless you protestations over here. What you have said is out of context, withdraw and stick yourself to the context that you just read. Thank you, thank you very much, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, 
with, the, with reference to the statement that I have just read. So you have withdrawn the earlier part? Exactly so, Mr. Speaker. Very well. Then you exactly will continue. So. My actually, contention... Honorable members, we are going to contextualize so that we operate within the parameters of our report and the relevant issues now before this honorable house. And I'm going to insist upon that. Honorable, you may continue. I have withdrawn. Thank you. Thank you very much, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, my contention is that the sterling performance of West Blue and GCNet is very encouraging. And the minister has admitted to a 24% growth, a 24% growth in, in revenue, which is very important to the IGF position of the ministry in implementing this program. And in fact, as Mr. Speaker, you will recall, you will notice that in the budget, we are expecting to get almost 73 million in the previous year from IDF, and some of this IDF will be coming from the good performance of DCNET and West Blue in implementing this program. Mr. Speaker, I want to advise that going forward, the ministry in its budget estimate for 2019 should be strengthening the performance of West Blue, should be strengthening the performance of GCNET. And Mr. Speaker, it is important to recognize that GCNET is partly owned by the state. And therefore, any revenues and profits accruing to GCNet is to the benefit of Ghanaians. And I want to encourage the ministry to stick with this telling performance of GCNet and West Blue in order that they are not taken out of, out of business. Mr. Speaker, I would like to know, in the budget, we are made to understand that 10% of financing costs would be absorbed by the government in respect of the one district, one factor. We are not too sure how that is going to happen. We are not too sure how much is involved. We are not too sure how we are financing that 10% in 2019. And yet, it is a major stimulus drive that would encourage investors to take advantage of one day state one party. Mr. Speaker, with these viewers, I would like to support the approval of your budget. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other?